The Gospel of John is perhaps the most important biography with regard to understanding who Jesus was. John wrote his prologue, chapter 1, verses 1 through 18, knowing that it was the lens through which we read the rest of his gospel. We must consider um, the prologue any time we read uh, the teachings of Jesus. The prologue has to be in the back of our mind whenever we read anything else in the gospel of John. So, what is the prologue teaching? Well, well, in this video, I'm going to zoom in on that. I'm going to zoom in particularly on the first verse, which reads, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Now, I'm not sure that there is another sentence with as much latitude behind it. There's just so much that John wanted us to derive from the single line. So, what is it? What does John 1 1 mean? First, it means that the word is eternal. Most will notice the parallel between the first few verses of Genesis and the first few verses of the prologue of John. In the beginning, God. Note the parallel, the same era. In the beginning and the same character, God. God created the heavens and the earth parallels. All things were created through him. But how did God create? Through the spoken word. Genesis 1-3, then God said, let there be light. This comes to life in John, for the word was in the beginning uh, with God, John 1-2. We see the, par the parallel concepts in darkness and light in the next few verses. Now, why is this significant? Why is this parallel between Genesis and John significant? It's significant because the very same beginning 
that Genesis was talking about is the beginning that John was talking about. So what does John 1.1 1, 1 mean? It means that the Word was there in the beginning. Uh, now the Jehovah's Witnesses, those who believe that Jesus is not God and is not eternal, might reply that the Word was there in, be in the beginning because that was when God created him. But the grammar does not permit that interpretation. The tense of the word was demands continuous action in the past. And since we are referring to the beginning, we are led irrevocably to the conclusion that the word existed in eternity past. Thus the New Living Translation is vindicated. In the beginning the word already existed. But I suppose this could raise a theological question. How could another exist alongside God from eternity? And this brings me to my second point, and the second part of John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word was with God. Now if I tell you that I'm with a friend of mine, the assumption will be that I'm face to face with that person. That is what the word translated into with expresses. The word is pros, and it literally means face to face with. In fact, Paul used the same word pros in 1 Corinthians 13.12, which reads, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Since with may literally be translated face to face, it follows that John is expressing that the word was face to face with God from eternity. Now, it might surprise you to know that this is a point of contention. Uh, since some people want to say that Jesus is the person of the Father, they will deny the plain reading of the verse. Rather than being face to face with the Father, the Oneness Pentecostals will say that Jesus was a plan or a forethought in the mind of God. But the text seems to disconfirm this interpretation. The last line of John's prologue seems to, to deal the death blow to this verse. It reads, No one has seen God at any time but the only begotten God in the bosom of the Father. He has explained him. So what does John 1.1 1, 1 mean? The same thing as John 1.18. Jesus is the only begotten God, and he is in the bosom of the Father from eternity past. So, with that in mind, it would be a challenge for anybody to maintain that Jesus is the Father. If their view is based solely on the text, and if they care what the text says. The third part of John 1.1, 1, 1, the Word was God. 
I suppose this would raise a question about the authority of Scripture. Now, since I assume that Scripture is true, and John assumes that Scripture is true, we need to keep another truth in mind as we interpret this, pas this passage. Uh, there is only one God. And there is no one beside him. Isaiah 43, 11. The gods of the nations are idols. Psalm 96, 5. So if John is saying that the word is God, then we cannot allow our interpretation of that to extend beyond that truth. Because there is only one God. We have a saying in science, extraordinary claims require extraordinary proof. But also, the word was God. He could not merely be a God, as the Jehovah's Witnesses will render this verse. The Jehovah's Witnesses uh, Bible will say, and the word was a God. But uh, theologically, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, of course. Uh, doctrine does not render translation, the words do. Uh, so that the, re the reason that the Jehovah's Witnesses think that this should be rendered and the word was a God is that there is no article before the word God, while there is one before word. However, to that I would object that the presence of the article in the Greek language only goes to show that the word is the subject of the sentence. John could have put an article in front of God and the verse would have been rendered, God was the word, thus rendering God and the word interchangeable and hence teaching modalism. But John was not teaching modalism. So what does John 1-1 one, one mean? Uh, he put the article exclusively in front of the word because that was the best way to express that the word was God. What does John 1-1 one, one mean to sum up? John wrote his gospel about the nature of Christ. Whatever Jesus says, we need to interpret it through the lens of this prologue. Jesus already existed in the beginning. He was never created. He was with God the Father and he was God. In this we have a powerful case for the Trinitarian nature of God.
There is one God who is eternally present in three persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. John 1.1 1, 1 refutes the view that Jesus is the person of the Father, and it refutes the view that the Word was merely a God.